All right. Question six is kind of an interesting question. And some of it is it just helps us to recognize that we can't always use this sequential counting principle. We really have to be able to follow the type of scenario that it was designed for. So the question says there are some situations that the sequential counting principle does not work for. For example, how many ways can you throw three standard dice one at a time and have the sum of them equal four? This is a pretty fun question to play around with on your own first. So standard dice just means um, like the dice that have six different faces on them, a one, two, three, four, five through six. So what we're doing is we're throwing the dice down and we're going to add up the total of what we rolled. So like if I had happened to roll like a two and then a four and then a one, well, then we would add two plus four plus one. My sum would be seven. Right. So obviously that's not the scenario that we're looking for in this one, but just to help you understand the context of the question. That's what we're talking about. So we're adding up the numbers on the dice. So what we need to think about then is, well, how is it even possible, first off, to do this so that I'm adding up the numbers and getting a sum of four? Now, another thing that we're doing is we're throwing them one at a time. So right, so even if I had rolled them, I'll give you another scenario, right? Maybe I rolled um a one and then another one and then a five this would equal seven but so would doing like a one and then a five and then another one that would also equal seven so those are two different scenarios of ways to sum up to seven so instead, now let's think about summing up to a four. Well, if I roll, say, a four on one of my dice, well, then there's nothing that I could put on the second dice. I'm already too big, right? Those ones have to be at least a one. So this isn't going to work. I can't roll a four. And for the same reason, I can't roll like a five or a six. That would just be too big. Now, can we even roll something like a three? Well, if I roll a three, I could make one of these a one. But then again, I'm already at a sum of four. So then my next die is too big already. I can't sum to it. So then let's think about, well, what if I roll, oops, let's say I roll a two. Well, if I roll a two, well, I can't roll another two because then I'm already at four and then my third die will push it over. But I could roll a one and I could roll another one. So then two plus one plus one would be four. So here's my magic combination. And I can't roll all three ones because then it would only sum to three. So I need one, two, and two ones. That's what I need. Now that's one possibility of how I could do it. I could roll the two first, or I could roll a one first, and then the two, and then another one. Or I could roll a one and then the other one and then roll a two, right? You can kind of picture there's not any other choices for how we could do this. So there are three total ways. Now we might have attempted to see does sequential counting work for this? Right? Does it make sense? Well, I do have three dice. So there is like a first die, second die, third die. And in theory, well, each one of them can either be a one or a two, right? The first one can be a one or a two, the second one a one or a two, and the third one 
But if I try and do that, notice it's too big. Two times two times two is eight, which is far too big for this problem. So then there's a question of, well, why doesn't it work? So why doesn't SCP work? Let's go ahead and try to think about it by drawing a tree. So again, first die, second die, third die. So when I roll that first die, well, it could be either a one or a two. That's valid. If I had rolled a one first, that's like up here, right? Rolling a one first. Well, then my, la my second number, I could either roll a two or I could roll a one. So one or two are options for those ones. If I had rolled a one and then a one, well, then my third die is actually fixed. It has to be a two in order to finish getting the sum. Having a third die of a one doesn't work. That only gives me three. That is one of these eight possibilities because really what that top one is saying, all three of them can be any of the options, one or two. So that would include rolling like a one and then a one and then a one, which I don't actually want in this question. So let's continue to see if, well, is could we still have fixed sequential counting or is it still just not fixable? If I had rolled a one and then a two, that's like this middle option here, my third die would have to be the second one. Now, if I go down though to the bottom branch and I look at, well, what would happen if I had rolled the two first? Well, if I already rolled the two, then I can't roll any more twos. My second die would have to be a one, and then my third die would have to be a one. And this is really where sequential counting breaks down, because remember part of what we said is that these numbers in the blanks needed to be something fixed. It needed to be a number that no matter what happened in the other events, you knew the total number of options for that event. Now, the first die does have two options, right? That's true no matter what. And the last die actually always has one option, but the middle die sometimes has two options and sometimes has one option. So if I think about trying to put numbers in the blanks, there'd be a two in the first one, a one in the second one, but I can't figure out what to put in the middle one because it's not constant. It's not fixed. So that's why sequential counting doesn't work for this problem, is you can't put the number in this second blank for that second die. It's not a consistent number throughout. So you always want to think about with these ones, you know, can I break it down into multiple events and can I know exactly what number to put in that, in that blank? This is a particularly kind of just get your brain thinking type of question. Really with this one, it is a small enough question where doing something like listing all of the possibilities or drawing the tree is a good choice for how to solve it. We won't do a lot of questions like this that don't fit um, our techniques that we're learning, but it is, it, it's helpful to understand when the technique is applicable to see examples of when it's not applicable. So being able to kind of think through what goes in those different spots is important.